Now that we've talked about different ways that we can loop, and we've talked about arrays and objects, let's get into nested loops and working with multi-dimensional objects, multi-dimensional arrays, multi-dimensional multi objects, uh, arrays nested inside of objects, objects nested inside of arrays. We can combine different types of loops, for loops, for in loops, for each loops, to be able to access all the properties that are inside of there. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways that we can approach this because this is the kind of data that you're going to get if you start doing AJAX calls and getting data back from a server as JSON you're going to need to be able to work with that JSON data. So I've got a two-dimensional array here. I've got an array. You can see it starts here and ends here and inside of the array there are three other arrays. So the outer array has three elements. The first element is this array and then there's a comma the second element, a comma, and the third element, also an array. Down here I've got an object. Big Hero starts here, ends here. That is the object. There is one property inside of it. It's called characters. That property is an array. So we have an array that has objects inside of it. So we've got an object containing an array which contains objects. So we're going to look at different ways that we can loop through these and uh, access the data that's inside them. First of all, let's work with the uh, two-dimensional array. So just nested for loops is what we're going to do here. So nested for loops. All right, so I want to know how many arrays are inside my outer array. So I'm just going to ask for the length of this array. So 2d.length. That will tell you how many elements are inside of an array. So this has three elements. We know that all the elements are arrays. So this is how many times the outer loop has to loop. So say let i equals zero, i is less than rows, i plus plus, just a basic for loop. So the first time through we'll be looking at this, the second time through we'll be looking at this, the third time through we'll be looking at that last element. Now, each of these elements, intentionally, has a different number of items inside of it. So I need to know how many times to loop through this array, and then how many times to loop through this array. So each time through the outer loop, we're going to be looking at one array, and we'll ask it, okay, how many items are inside that? Just like I did here. So let items equal... 2d, that's the outer array, sub i. So this is going to be 0, then 1, then 2. This will be pointing to this array, then this array, then this array. And we go length, and now we put another array, uh, another loop. So we'll have a for loop here. And we have to use a different variable. We're using i for the outer loop. For the inner loop, we're going to have to use a different variable, so I'm going to use n. i for integer, n for number, less than items, n plus plus. Okay, so this is going to loop through the outer ones, and then for each one of those items, once we have the first item selected, we'll look at how many items are inside that, and we'll loop. So we're going to go inside here, actually, let's just test this just to see that we've got something going. So console.log items. And actually we'll put i in here as well. So we should see 0, 1, and 2 for the i values. And items will be 7, and 8, and 6. 7, 8, and 6, 0, 1, and 2. So the first th first array inside the array has 7 items, the second one has 8, the third one has 6. Great. And inside here, if we want to write out each one of these, console.log 2d sub i. Now, if you're just working with a single dimensional array, this is what you'd do, just like we did here. I want to get at item 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inside of this. So what we do is we add another set of square brackets and we use our 
inner counter, n. There we go. So inside of 0, we had 7. And the values are 1 through 7. For array 1, there's 8. Here's the values. For array 2, there's 6. And there they are. So there we are. Two-dimensional array, nested loops, nested for loops, looping through all the items. All right, so I'm going to comment that out and move on to the next object here. Getting into the big hero object. Big hero dot characters, or big hero square bracket with characters inside quotation marks. There's two ways that we can reference this property and this array right here, which is really what we're going to be working with. So let's say let chars equal. So I'm going to use chars to point at this whole array right here. And that's going to be equal to big hero dot characters. This is one way I can write it. A second way that we can write it, so I'll just comment that out. Big hero and then square brackets characters. So either one of these is going to work. Big hero dot characters, that's the name of the property, or in quotation marks inside the square brackets. So either one of these gives us this value, which is a reference to this array. All right, let's loop through an array. So we can say for let i equal 0, and I will get my length as well. So we'll say chars dot length. I want to fetch that. I'm going to put that into a variable called len. There we go. Those are two initialized values. And as long as i is less than len, we'll keep looping. There we go. So this loop is going to loop through these four things right here. Four objects. So chars sub i will point to one of these objects, one at a time. A log chars sub i. So let's just test that. Clear this off. And again. Okay, great. So first time, second time, third time, fourth time through the loop, there's the whole object. Now, if you wanted to target individual properties inside of here, we just have to extend this a little bit. I could, if I wanted to target just one of these, be able to spell console correctly, chars sub i, and then I can say dot name. I could say console dot log chars sub i, and then using the square bracket syntax, the other property up here is voice. So we do that. So this is going to give us a whole bunch of comments. There's the object. There's the name, and there's the voice. So we're getting these individual properties with this syntax. Now, if I wanted to loop through in the same way that we did here, we didn't know how many elements were inside the array. If I didn't know how many properties were inside here, we can do that as well. I'm just going to comment these out and show you an inner loop inside of here. Now, with arrays, we can use a for loop where you've got the three different uh, sections to it, your uh, initialization, your test, and your increment or decrement operator. We're going to do a for in loop. So let prop in chars sub i. So remember chars sub i was this entire property right here. This is chars sub i. So there is some number of properties. We don't know how many, but there is some number of properties. This will represent the name of the property. So this will represent name or voice. And char sub i is the whole object. So we can write those out. 
console.log pop and then chars sub i dot prop or chars sub i and then in the square brackets prop. I'm not using quotation marks here because prop is a variable name and I want to get to the Oh, sorry, yes. I need the square bracket syntax here. That's why I wanted to show this. Because this is a variable, this isn't a string, I cannot use the dot notation here. I have to use the square bracket syntax. That's why we're getting undefined here for prop. There is nothing inside of here called prop. If I was to come inside one and create a prop, there we go, prop 12 on Baymax. There it is, prop 12. So there's a name, a voice, and a prop property, and the value is 12. So here it works because there is something called prop. This is a variable though, so inside the square brackets, the variable will be read and it'll say, okay, this is either name or voice, and that will replace the prop, so we know if we're talking about name or voice. So for everybody else, prop is undefined. For Baymax, prop comes through. So we have this one that's working. Everybody else, undefined. And that's how you do nested loops with objects, nested loop with arrays. You can combine for loops with for in loops. Uh, we could do a for each loop here in place of the, the for loop if we wanted. But just remember that you can often use either the dot syntax or the square bracket syntax, except when you've got a property name, uh, a variable name rather. With the variables, you have to use the square bracket syntax. Okay, any questions, please leave them in the comments.